So you've got, how did you get Ben Shelton? <laughs> well, I'll tell you how I got Ben Shelton. It was because obviously, um, you know, being with him at the Labor Cup right after his great run at the U.S. Open, um, got to know him a little bit. And uh, he's a great kid. There's no doubt that um, not only is he a tremendous talent and what he brings to the court is obvious, but I think his story of how, uh, you know, his junior tennis story is to me really interesting that he didn't focus predominantly on tennis when he was quite young, played other sports, including football. Um, and I love that his dad said to him at one point when he was obviously one of the, one of the top juniors in the country, I believe at 16 or 17 and his dad, who I grew up playing tennis with and actually played junior tennis with Brian um, in the nationals back in the day. And then we played on the tour together. Um, and his dad said to him when he brought up the idea Ben did of playing ITF tournaments and traveling overseas and his dad said, well, why do you need to do that? Why don't you, you know, have you won anything? Have you won any big tournaments? And I guess the answer at that point was no. Uh, so he said, well, why, why do you need to leave Florida? Just, you know, stay and play local tournaments. So that's something that, you know, John and I have always believed in. Um, if, if, if you can have great competition in your area, it's not nece necessarily – uh, the right call to have to travel all over the, the world and the country. Now, many kids choose that route because they want to. And we all know that getting ITF points is an important part of junior tennis and getting into college. But uh, I think Ben has a, uh, an interesting view on um, his own path. You know, when he played the Australian Open this past year and, and made it to the quarterfinals, that was the first time he'd ever been out of the country. Not, not just to play tennis, the first time he'd ever been out of the country. Um, so I think his story is one that, uh, you know, I, our kids are going to love to hear about. He's, he's got an infectious personality. Obviously playing college tennis, you could see the impact when we were with him at the Labor Cup, you know, being such a great team player. Um, I remember that we had a meeting the night before the final day, all of us, myself and John and the players, strategizing about who should play on the final day of the Labor Cup. And even though Ben had won all his matches, um, he said, listen, I'm new to the team. And I think, uh, you know, the other guys should play singles, meaning Tiafo and Fritz. And I think um, our third one was going to be Felix on that day. But he said, I just want to play the, you know, I'll play the doubles and just a, just a great team player. So I think what he brings to the table um, is obvious, as I said, with his talent. But also, I think his journey is one that will re really resonate with our kids. Wow. Yeah, that's a really interesting one. So what is it, November 28th? November 28th. I uh, believe it's going to be, at, is it 7 p.m.? Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's super excited about doing it. I've been texting back and forth and uh, he's just a great young kid and he, he, he brings a lot of amazing energy. So I think um, he, he's just very engaging. So I think he's going to be great. Really great. Fantastic star. Um, Mike, you're going the other end of the spectrum, right? So Dominic Cabati. Why should we tune in for that one? Well, so so Dominic obviously was an incredible player, um, you know, from Bratislava, um, Slovakia. Uh, I met him at the at the Hamlet Cup, which is like a warm up event for the U.S. Open. And uh, for whatever reason, we just like started heckling all of his opponents and then we became friendly after matches and stuff. And we kind of stayed in touch while I was in college and throughout. And he's, he's, he had an amazing career. Um, one of the higher ball tosses, I think of all time. And, uh, you know, but the fact that he had winning records over um, Nadal and, uh, and, and uh, Federer, and uh, I think he's one and one with Djokovic, uh, not many players. I think only two other players can, can say that. So, uh, so it's pretty cool to kind of have that.
but I'm I'm excited. I, Patrick, I hope you join us on the call and everyone else. Uh, we're going to have a blast on it. That's for sure. Brian. So, Brian, you're 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 uh, I'm last. Well, you may be last, but I thought we we would we put you in the middle on this because I'm thinking there's quite an interesting, you know, interesting uh, webinar for you to have based on like, you know, we talk a lot to, uh, to professional tennis players. We're talking to people who, you know, everybody knows from the, from the tennis court. And yet, you know, you're actually ha talking to somebody very different who probably spends like almost every day a bit on a tennis court and just loves the game. So Hank, grew up wanting to play tennis but his family didn't really support it he has an interesting dynamic with his family uh grew up on long island probably not that far from pmac and and john out there absolutely adores tennis loves being on the court but had no support so once when he moved out to la and started acting and getting you know being come successful he kind of reverted back to childhood and wanted to play a lot of tennis so it's been really interesting to hear his pathway to wanting to be good at tennis. And he probably is one of my hardest working clients. Well, why I picked him is also he has a kid in our program and he supports JMTP. So I thought that here's a prime candidate for an adult who loves tennis, who wanted to play as a kid, but didn't get as much time or support. So there's one aspect that we can discuss is parents supporting the kids right as a venture through tennis one of the really interesting ones I, I think is like how you've got someone who's absolutely at the top of their game i mean when i i kind of started working in new york like a year ago or a year and a half ago I turn on the tv and he's on almost like five different series on netflix or something like that and yet so he's really competent over there but talking about how you're going about working on something every day and trying to learn and trying to be better at something that you really love and you're passionate about but you know, it's not like as some kind of amazing superstar tennis player. It's all about learning, working hard, you know, finding a way, which applies to pretty much everyone that steps on a court, right? You know, genuinely, he's a great person and he's caring and he just loves our sport, which we need more people like him. That's going to be a really interesting one. Mark, you're... Um, Heading in a slightly different direction. So back to tennis and I'm, I'm can, rolling back the years. Wait, can we, doubles, can we, can doubles, can, doubles, wait. doubles, 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 right? Correct. Can we ask why well, he's playing for New Zealand and not US? I I mean, I can certainly ask him the question, <laughs> but yeah, so Mike, Mike Venus is gonna join us, uh, who's a current, you know, pro on the doubles tour, who's six in the or was as high as six in the world. He's currently sits about 20, he's won a grand slam, you know, made finals at Wimbledon. So obviously a terrific sort of resume in, in pro uh, doubles and you know he's he's a great guy I've known him obviously for the better part of like 16 years at this point and you know obviously I think we'll talk a little bit about kind of that transition from college tennis to the pro world and ultimately you know some of the main reasons why you would choose college tennis in the first place I think you know he will talk a lot about how it developed him as a player and sort of prepared him for that life um you know because it's it's a long journey you know he's been on the tour since 2010 um so he's going to have some pretty great insight into that and i'm sure he'll talk a little bit about kind of how the tour has changed certainly in that time span um as well so it should be a great one looking forward to it where did he go to college mark he was at texas um for one year and then decided to go pro very briefly um and then played in um the atp 500 in dc decided he wasn't quite ready to go pro and actually then came back, was ineligible for a year, his first year at LSU, and then finished out uh, two years at LSU. Um, and then after that, went back on the tour. And I think it's um, I think it's a fascinating story because a lot of our kids, I would say, you know, could be in a similar type of situation where, um, you know, that that's, that's something to think about for players going to play high-level college uh, to make that decision. And as, as, as Mike pointed out, you know, there's sort of that, oh, do I keep trying to play or do I go into the private sector, try to become a coach? So um, I'm interested to hear his story because he's he's been darn successful on tour. No, it should be great. And and sorry to butt in, but my, my subject's a little similar to that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm going to bring in Jameer Jenkins and played at the University of Virginia and, and went at 
different route. Like I kind of wonder why he didn't go. Maybe we'll ask him why he didn't go more kind of the doubles route. Got up to right around 100 in the world on the tour after his time at Virginia. He was a national player of the year, won a national team title at Virginia with Brian Bolin there. And um, and just a great guy, but kind of after leaving the tour, had an opportunity to become Serena Williams' hitting partner. And uh, he actually worked for Sport Time for a couple of years and uh, was, a, was a bit of a traveling coach for us uh, out here on the island and, and worked with some of our players. And then he, he left us to go become uh, – uh, the hitting partner for Serena. I don't know why he would do that, but uh, I guess it was a good gig. And, uh, and you know, we, we forgave him for it, but uh, he had the chance to then also work, of course, with, with Patrick Moritoglu, the wrong Patrick. He'll maybe now he'll, doing this seminar, he'll get a, this webinar, he'll get a chance to work with the, the right Patrick. Uh, yeah. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe, maybe that would be better. I don't charge as much for a lesson. So, yeah, you know, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> perfect perfect so uh so you know then uh you know serena obviously retired and then he became uh had the opportunity recently um just a just a couple months before this past u.s open to go work with coco golf and uh become one of the assistant coaches with brad gilbert with her and obviously that all worked out pretty well um coco did pretty well so um jameer a great friend of mine and and uh, we're gonna bring him in and and talk about college tennis and and uh and also we're gonna we're going to have a little group therapy session with, with Jameer and I, and, and then uh, our good GMTA friend, Danny Pellerito is going to come and join us. And, uh, and then Joey Scrivano, uh, the head coach, former national coach of the year at Baylor is going to join us. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk all, all that is college tennis and, and wow. different avenues afterwards. That's, that's a loaded group right there. That's going to be awesome. Loaded. Right. Well guys, thanks very much for joining this call. And, and, uh, we look excited to see everybody's presentations, everyone's webinars join in. Don't forget, like, if you're joining this, going to join this as the audience, there's the chance to ask questions. I know, um, like, Mike's going to be asking all questions about Patrick David's cup skills during the uh, during the Dominic Cabati interview. So make sure you tune in, join in on this, join in on the conversation, ask the questions you want to ask, because we're kind of as interested in, in talking to each other's guests as we are in bringing you the people that we know and really helping to add something to, uh, to GMTA. Thanks everyone. Thank, Thank you. Mike.